You might not find it that fun to hop into an EV and drive around all day, but I do. And I guess that's why I'm a little bit weird. And it's also why I am very excited to be here with this. This is the 2024 Porsche Macan EV, the second EV from the German automaker. And today we're gonna find out just how far it'll go. Now, this is going to be a little bit different than the standard Edmunds EV range test in a few different ways. And one of them is that we have no idea how far this vehicle is going to go. Sorry to interrupt, but on these prototype drives, sometimes things can be fluid. And since we drove this vehicle, Porsche actually let us know that we're not allowed to mention the names of the trim levels yet. So you're just gonna hear me call them top trim level, bottom trim level throughout this video. This is a Macan EV top trim level. So it's the more powerful one that makes over 600 horsepower. And Porsche says that they don't have an EPA estimate for us yet. Our plan is just to get on the highway, drive at 70 miles an hour, and really see how far this thing is going to go. And hopefully, end up right back here in this same spot. Now, this is different again from the Edmunds methodology. We like to use a mix of city and highway driving in a very precise sort of mix to give you a better real world figure. But for today's test, um, we're gonna do something a little bit different and it might not give us the same Edmunds EV official range figure, but it should give us a pretty good idea of just how far this new EV can go. Now, if I had to take a guess as to how far this vehicle might go today, I'd probably wager about 250 miles. That's because the closest analog that we have to the Macan EV top trim level is the Porsche Taycan GTS, which got about 260 miles on our test when we ran it last year. Now, this test that we're going to do today, not as gentle to the cars as the Edmunds EV range test because there's no city miles. This is all gonna be run basically at higher speeds, which generally are harder on range than those city miles. So a showing of 250 miles for this vehicle, I think would be really impressive, especially when you also consider that performance SUVs like the Kia EV6 GT, especially, they generally get pretty low mileage figures. The Kia EV6 GT does way worse than the regular EV6. Those big motors generally soak up more power. If this thing does anywhere near 250 miles today, I'll be pretty impressed. Our route for the day took us out from the hotel and directly onto the highway where we headed east until we got down to about half range remaining and then flipped around. Conditions for this test were just about perfect from a weather perspective with temperatures in the mid 60s to low 70s for most of the time and minimal wind. Even the signature windmills out near Palm Springs those were barely turning at all. As you can see before, this is a prototype version of the Macan EV, which internally Porsche just refers to as the Macan, but we're going to keep calling it the Macan EV for now, just for clarity. That means much of the exterior was covered up as you could see, and the interior wasn't fully finished. Though Porsche assured us that none of the extra cladding on the outside would affect the vehicle's aerodynamics and therefore its range. The PPE platform that the Macan EV rides on also comes with a larger battery than the Taycan offers, a 100 kilowatt lithium ion battery that comes with impressively fast charging times at speeds up to 270 kilowatts. That will charge the battery from 10 to 80% in just over 20 minutes, and that's something that we're eager to test ourselves to see where this vehicle ends up on the Edmunds EV fast charging leaderboard. It also has a one-speed transmission, different than the Taycan's two-speed transmission that made that vehicle very efficient on the highway. Another reason why I wasn't too optimistic about the Macan EV's potential range on this test in particular. Porsche also stipulated that we could not talk about any driving impressions from this experience at all. We can only stick to the range part of the story. So while I want to tell you what it's like to drive this Macan top trim level, that sitting behind the wheel of it really feels like... And that's all I have to say about that. Along for the ride with me were Calvin from Porsche PR and Sebastian from Germany, who handled the route. I set the climate control at 72 degrees on auto like we do for the Edmunds EV range test, but we couldn't use eco climate control because with three grown men in the car, it started to get quite stuffy. And we drove in the normal drive mode, which Porsche said would be the most efficient and with the air suspension set to its lowest height for the best aerodynamics. We kept a close eye on the vehicle's range along the route, and we ended up having to change our original route and go further down the highway because the Macan EV's range figure kept holding up and it just kept going and going and going and going and going. You get the picture. The route out from our starting point also included climbing up a fairly long grade, so we figured we'd gain some range back on the way down the hill. So after the battery got to just under 50% remaining, we flipped around and headed back to the hotel, and just as we thought, the car made it with some miles to spare. In total, the Macan EV arrived back at the start having covered 298 miles, with seven miles of range left in reserve, giving us a total figure of 305 miles. 
That is really a great showing considering the one speed transmission and the fact that our average speed for this drive ended up being 61 miles an hour for the entirety of the journey. Our end consumption figure according to the trip computer was 30.6 kilowatt hours per 100 miles, though this is a figure that is hard to verify without knowing exactly how much energy was needed to recharge the battery to full. I should mention that we weren't the only Macan EV on the route that day. There was another team running a Macan bottom trim level, the less powerful and therefore more efficient version of the SUV which comes on smaller, more efficient wheels and tires as well. That vehicle ended up covering 325 miles on roughly the same route, and that version of the Macan EV has the potential to climb high up the Edmunds EV range leaderboard when we get to test it. So we're back at the hotel we started where the Macan EV is going to get a much deserved and much needed recharge after covering 305 highway miles. I can't stress enough how impressive that performance is considering the amount of power and performance you're gonna get out of this vehicle performance that I can't really tell you about right now. But if you wanna know more about the Macan EV, be sure to like and subscribe because soon we're gonna get a chance to walk around a more complete version of this vehicle and show you the interior and technology that should also have you just as excited.